you were lied to. I was lied to. We were all lied to. At least that's what it feels like. USB-C was supposed to be this harbinger for change that would come in and save us from the chaotic, fragmented, and confusing charging system that we'd found ourselves in. Now, years later, USB-C may have done more bad than good. And personally, I don't blame Apple for being slow or cautious as they consider whether to bring USB-C to the iPhone. Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here, and if you can't tell, I'm pretty fed up with USB-C at the moment. It's a infuriatingly confusing standard, and it seems to be only getting worse with each bit of news and new cable that's brought to market. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through some of the current challenges with USB-C and where we're looking to with the future of this data, video, and charging standard. Here's my problem with USB-C, just in a nutshell. Nothing's consistent or transparent. You can pick up any cable and not know if this supports video, if this supports charging, if it supports data, uh, and if it supports those, how much? How much data can it transfer how fast? Can this support a 4K display, a 5K display, or a 6K display? Can this support USB-C PD uh, charging? And if so, how fast? You can't tell almost any of this from looking at most cables. Let's first start with just what is USB-C? Because that's usually the term that is thrown around a lot. And I am sorry for those that are very techy out there that this is a little rudimentary. Please feel free to jump to the next chapter in this video. But for anyone who doesn't know the kind of bare bones basics of USB-C, I feel like it's important to talk about it for just a, a minute. Basically, when you're looking at a USB-C cable, it's not just a USB-C cable, it's usually you know two different parts. There's the video data charging amount, like the stuff that's actually transferred over the cable, and then there's the connector on the end. So essentially what you have is uh, some sort of USB or Thunderbolt cable and then a Type-C connector on the end then you'll have matching Type-C devices, whether it is the charging ports on any charger that you have around, uh, or it could be the, uh, the Mac that you're plugging it into. So those are all like Type-C, but they can all handle varying degrees of data, video, and power for a wide swath of devices. Ideally, USB-C would be perfect because you'd have this singular cable with the same reversible connector on either end. You could turn the cable in either way. It wouldn't matter. It would power everything from your Nintendo Switch to your PlayStation to your iPhone to your iPad to your headphones to your Mac peripherals, your displays. Uh, everything would just be all in USB-C. It would be fantastic. Of course, we don't live in such an idealized society and things are much murkier than that. Not to try to make a confusing topic already more confusing, because you have to separate what is transferred to the cable from the connector on the end, that means you also have things like Thunderbolt cables. Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4 both use the Type-C connector. So while in this video I say USB-C a whole lot, most of the same stuff can apply to Thunderbolt cables as well. They're kind of in the mix, just using that same connector there on the end. If I could just interrupt myself for one moment, I have to thank our sponsor for this video, Jamf. Jamf is the de facto standard in Apple mobile device management, and it's trusted by more than 62,000 businesses, schools, and hospitals. Apple's exceptional hardware is only half of the equation. How you secure, manage, and to empower your users with that technology is the other half, and Jamf makes that happen. Jamf has the ability to scale to any business, whether you've got just a handful of iPhones or iPads or tens of thousands of iPhones, iPads, Macs, or Apple TVs, Jamf can be your solution. 
Jamf is ready to scale to any size business. Whether you've got a handful of iPads or you have tens of thousands of iPhones, iPads, Macs, and Apple TVs, Jamf can be the solution. Recently, it introduced app installers, which is an automated way for IT teams to update third-party Mac apps when a new version is released. Jamf automatically sources, packages, and deploys the new versions, ensuring users have the latest features and security patches. On a personal note, I've actually had the opportunity to sit down with several organizations that have rolled out Jamf MDM solutions in their businesses, and they have always spoken extremely highly of Jamf software and credited it with making all of their goals a reality. You can get started today and start your free trial by following the link that is down in the description or by heading to Jamf.com. Thank you again very much to Jamf for sponsoring this video. So how much data can a USB cable carry? Well, it depends. A USB-C cable can handle anywhere from 240 Mbps all the way up to 40 Gbps. That's right, you can go from just a few megs to gigs of data on the cable that you're using. A USB-C cable could support USB 2.0 speed, which is 480 Mbps, could support USB 3 speeds at 5 Gbps, USB 3.1 Gen 2, which ups it to 10 Gbps, USB 3.2, which is 20 Gbps, or USB 4, which is 40 Gbps. If we're looking at Thunderbolt cables, those also can be 40 Gbps. That brings us to how much power a cable can provide. Because of course, you know, with these magical cables, they're gonna charge your devices as well as transfer data between your devices. And if we look at how much power a cable can draw, it is equally as opaque. First, a cable could or could not support USB-C power delivery. So power delivery is just a higher amount of power. So I think it's around 18 watts, I believe. So it could support, you know, five watts, 10 watts, the slower amount of charging power, or it could support USB PD power delivery. And this can go all the way up to 240 watts of power. It's a massive difference from 18 watts on USB-C PD or all up to 240 watts on USB-C PD, all just under the umbrella of power delivery. The power delivery stuff really bothers me because a lot of people don't know that a cable can do different amounts of power. I mean, look at this. This is a uh, Zendur Super Tank Pro, I believe. This is a 100 watt battery pack. Like it has input and output of 100 watts of power using USB power delivery. If you have a battery that's this large, you want really fast charging speeds. So if you pair this battery with another 100 watt charger, so find a 100 watt charger. Apple's got a 140 watt one, uh, Ugreen here, 100 watts. Uh, but pick a 100 watt charger. You can power this up at 100 watts of power. Chargers all nicely have them labeled, you know, re literally right there on the side, 100 watts right there on the side of this charger. But the cables, not so much. Not so much. This cable here, no idea how much power uh, it supports. No idea how much power this one supports. Uh, I think this one I, I for sure know. This is Apple's most recent Thunderbolt cable and it will support up to 100 watts of power. But uh, most of these cables here, I do not know. This short one here uh, from Nomad again, this I know is one of their more recent 100 watts of power cables, but I had to specifically choose it out because if you are not choosing a cable that can handle at least 100 watts of power, you can have a 100 watt charger and a battery that can handle 100 watts of input, but you're not gonna get nearly that amount of power when using it. It's frustrating and so much so that I actually carry around uh, quite frequently a power meter. This guy right here from Sateki is their power meter and it'll handle various versions of USB-C uh, PD and tell you how much power your devices are using. I use it in reviewing charges and stuff just to see what the inputs will be, but it also gives me an idea on what cables I'm using and if the cable is providing enough power to what I'm trying to charge. It's kind of ridiculous that this is the point that we're at. There's a new version of USB-C, so USB-C 
2.1, as well as USB PD 3.1. So the USB spec and the power delivery spec, new versions of each of these that will support that up to 240 watts of power. Apple was actually one of the first to support this new version of USB-C PD with their 140 watt GAN charger that came out with the 16 inch MacBook Pros. This guy can fast charge the Mac using USB-C PD. Is it using a standard USB cable? No, because the USB ports on the 16 inch MacBook Pro only support standard USB PD up to 100 watts of power. And if you wanna use 140 watts of power, you need to have a port that goes with, and you have to use Apple's MagSafe cable, which is USB-C PD compliant using the revised USB 3 PD 3.1 spec that can handle that 140 watts of power. Have I lost you yet? Because this is confusing, just trying to make it consumable for all of you out there. Before trying to find the bright spot and looking at the future, let's try to summarize the main issues with cables of today. Any USB-C cable can support any myriad and combination of data, video, and charging abilities. Uh, any cable could support video output or it could not. If it supports video output, it could be 4K or it could be 6K. Uh, if we're looking at power, it could support USB-C PD or it could not. If it supports USB-C PD, it could support the old version of the spec or the new version of the spec. It could handle 18 watts of power, 60 watts of power, 100 watts of power, or 240 watts of power. And you just don't know. All of this just combines to be extremely confusing. I see a lot of cables that are designed for charging and they can't really handle data or video output. Something will be like, oh yeah, this is a 100 watt cable that you can use to charge your stuff really fast. And you'd think that because it's such a high performance cable, 100 watts of power, you'd be able to transfer files or display video on a 4K, 5K, 6K monitor. And yet you try to and it sucks or it doesn't work at all. And um, that's because it'll support that 100 watts of power, but it'll support USB 2.0 speeds of 400 and 480 megabits per second. It's just wrong. It's confusing. It doesn't make any sense. And there's very little uh, visibility into these things. This is a Nomad cable. There's nothing marking it of what spec they're using, what speed it's using, anything like that. You have to know from when you purchase this cable or what's on the box of this cable or label it in some weird way. And like these are you know big brands that are doing this stuff that is just confusing. Looking here, uh, this is Apple's Thunderbolt cable. Is this Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4? It doesn't say, it just has a Thunderbolt logo. It doesn't say anything further beyond that. CalDigit, it just says CalDigit. Is this Thunderbolt or USB? I assume there's no Thunderbolt logo, so I assume this is USB, but I don't know what version of USB-C. Uh, some cables, this one here, there's no logos on the end at all. I don't even know who makes this cable, but fortunately there is some very light text on the side that says it is a super high speed USB revision 3.1. So at least I know the data components of this cable, whatever it is, wherever this one came from. Uh, even Apple's own, the uh, USB cables that come with your Mac when they don't use MagSafe, those cables are intended for charging and they'll handle your charging speed, but they won't do any data. They're standard USB 2.0 data speeds. It's a mess. There's just no, Mophie is a big one. LG is a big one. None of these have any visibility into what they support. It, data, power, anything. You have to know when you buy them. And that's just wrong. Now, are things gonna get better? Right now, it doesn't look like it. And I know that's woeful and negative, and I don't wanna be like that. But it seems the small ray of hope is that the USB implementation or implementers forum, they, they understand there's a problem. They recently tried to make things better. In 2019, they came out with a whole bunch of new logos 
where they would combine things like the, the power delivery as well as the data and you'd have a, an array, a grid of logos that would try to determine what this cable would support. And in an ideal world, it would just be printed on the cable somewhere and you would know. I mean, it'd be ugly, but you'd know. And it seems like very few use those logos. They'll put it on the websites or on the cables when you're ordering them, but there's no way to check these things. There's no way to test these things. Um, really, not easily without buying additional hardware. And it's, it's terrible for the consumer. So a lot of people have been saying that Apple needs to move the iPhone to, to USB-C and ditch Lightning. At this point, I don't blame them. With Lightning, you have two options. You could get a USB-A version of Lightning and it supported uh, you know, those charging speeds. And if you got a USB-C version, it would guaranteed support USB-C PD with eight, at least 18 watts of power there to your iPhone. And that was it. You didn't ever have to worry about anything else. It was simple and magical. As we're bumping up against that limit on Lightning, Apple does need to make that crucial decision. If they move to USB-C, new version of Lightning, whatever it'll be, but the current state of USB-C is bad, it's a mess, and it doesn't seem like it's gonna get any better anytime soon. Let me know what you guys think of this USB-C mess down below in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. And if you'd like to learn more of the differences between USB and Thunderbolt, I have a link to a great article up on Apple Insider. Otherwise, stay tuned. I'll catch you guys in the next video.